Hey everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Heroes of the Storm doing another post-game commentary today. We're going to be playing some Greymane uh, in today's game, uh, so you can look forward to that. But let's go through the draft first. We're here on Warhead Junction. Uh, interesting map, not one I particularly like. Um, but I, I, there are some kind of unique gameplay things on it, which are kind of nice for sure. Um, so, uh, obviously we've got the nukes, which are pretty intriguing uh, gameplay. Uh, mechanic um, and of course we've got bosses which are very important on this too and it's a very large map the enemy team ban out Zagara to start things out which I think is a nice ban gonna ban Garrosh in return I do think that these are the two best heroes for hero league at the moment um, just overall I think just the things they do are fantastic now and worth noting that Zagara has uh, by the time this video comes out but not at the time of recording Zagara has received a no, I wouldn't say a small nerf, quite a large nerf to the cooldown of her Nidus network, which ought to bring her back in line a little bit, but she's still quite good. Zul'jin picked up as well, which is a, a really nice pick. He's a very high uh, damage dealer, particularly in the late game. He does an awful lot. Our teammates instantly lock in to Hakka and Falstad, uh, double globals, which uh, is really nice in this particular map too. Enemy grabs Artanis. Um, and then we'll see what their, their next pick is. But yeah, we've got two globals locked in right now. Zagara's off the board, so that's quite nice. Brightwing's still on the table as well as a, a, as another global. Um, so we're already set up, I think, for some pretty good success. And there's there's some pretty interesting plays that can be opened up with these globals. Now, I think uh, I'll point out a few situations where I feel like they actually get very underutilized in this particular game. So uh, you can stay tuned to kind of uh, hear me talking about that and the situations and things that are happening there. I am gonna ban out Anna. Uh, I think we've got pretty good. We probably could counterplay the Anna, but it's just not something I particularly want to deal with. Anna, either nano boosting a Zul'jin or nano boosting a Kel'Thu Zad, uh, seems like a bit of a pain. Uh, also, I don't know these these guys, so you, know, you kind of need that coordination to deal with the Anna. Uh, so just wasn't feeling super up to it. I was, as you can see, considering Cassia. I was like, hmm, I could play Cassia. Cassia, very nice against the Artanis, very nice against the Zul'jin. That would be a very good option as well. I decided to go for Greymane in the end, though. Uh, I think both would be really good. Obviously, you know, the Cassia would be fantastic at blinding the Zul'jin, blinding Artanis, uh, preventing Artanis from getting some, uh, quite a lot of cooldown reduction, actually, on his shields, bouncing around damage with the, um, with, uh, the uh, Chain Lightning at level 1, too. Um, I, I think it could have worked out really well, actually. I think it could have been nice, but I think Greymane fits here too. Uh, Greymane, high damage dealer, he's got sustained damage, he's good in duels and skirmishes, he's good against the Merc camps, he's good at, better against the boss than Cassia is. Um, and uh, yeah, he also has got burst damage on demand. <coughs> and flexibility in, in terms of his heroic choice as well, either squishy, focus, or tank focus. Uh, so I'll discuss more about that when we get to the game. So yeah, I'll see you guys over there. Alrighty, and here we are in um, into the game. Uh, gotta grab uh, and go for Cocktail build, of course. Picking up the Cocktail talents at 1, 4, and 7. At 1, we get uh, mana back and we hit a hero with the Cocktail. Increases the, the base range of the throw. Uh, level 4, we get increased explosion length. And then at level 7, we get probably the most important one uh, that really synergizes well with those first two, which is uh, stacking damage quest on the explosion. Uh, and also cooldown reduction when we finally uh, finish the particular quest. So just looking at the talents, so you can see Kel'Thuz has chosen a very unusual one at level 1. Uh, so that's nice for us. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to be... Uh, we'll be fairly safe here at the start. We don't want to be jumping in too aggressively into melee range. We could be in quite a lot of trouble if we do. We're going to be staying back, I think, in human form for most of this particular game. And doing what sort of pokey damage that we can. <clears throat> Stuff is going crazy here at level 1. Nice little escape by the Murden. We're doing damage as we go. Yeah, they've already burned a lot of their uh, a lot of their cooldowns there, so I'm not too scared. We miss a cocktail on the way back, but yeah, I'm able. I'm not too scared. I'm kind of stutter stepping, shooting as I go backwards out of that level one fight because I know that all the cooldowns seem to be scared if they've already been used. Our town is very close to dying. Had the potential to jump in and perhaps suicide, um, to maybe get the kill on him there. The storm bolt from Murden just about misses. Uh, the Kel'Thuz has been doing a pretty good job uh, with those Ws, actually. He's done a decent job. But you can see already on the map, we've got the Hacker up at top. We've got Falstead down bottom, and they should both win their respective lanes. So that removes quite a bit of pressure in terms of us. It's really the enemy team is going to be scrambling to keep control of these side lanes. And of course, it does. We're obviously going to back out there from uh, the enemy. You see them moving forwards. We don't have all that much backup here in the mid lane. You can see there's actually four heroes here. So we're not really looking to take any risks. 
I'm going to be playing it safe, just clearing in human form. Um, we did actually get hit by that one. going to stand near the middle of the lane so he can't hit either Regar or the towers, get some stacks. But yeah, we're running the side lanes. We're up in XP. Both those lanes getting pushed in. Muradin doing a nice job in terms of disrupting the enemy's rotation. Uh, everything like that. We lose the vision. That's okay, though. It's going to be clearing this out as we go. Again, we're being fairly safe because we're winning the side lanes. That's our win condition here for this particular game. Galthusad goes for a combo. We almost kill him then. Uh, burst some decent damage on to the uh, Stukov as well as we go. Get them with the flask on the way out too. And that's a nice little start here. Artanis is very deep. Uh, we're going to shoot him a whole bunch. Waiting for these cooldowns to go. Fortunately, we are silenced. That would have been a nice time to jump in on the Artanis. Fortunately, we're going to have to jump in now. And this is kind of crazy. This is something of a risk. Do manage to just about get out. We're going to juke away from the uh, the slow from the Stukov. He's going to throw down the silence. But we're going to make it out okay. Uh, honestly, probably didn't deserve to make it out okay for that one. That was a bit of a crazy jump in on the Artanis. Obviously, the perfect... It was a really good silence arm. The first one from the Stukov preventing me from jumping in and doing damage to that Artanis. Going to clear out this uh, minion wave. Get it pushing back. Get us some vision down that lane. Uh, we did lose the uh, McThingy down bottom. The... Uh, the thing. What's it called? The nuke! That's what it is. We lost the nuke down there. Uh, we're going to go... Hopefully, <laughs> Regar! Regar doesn't make it out. That's good. We're going to uh, do some decent damage to him. Uh, try to juke away, obviously, from this Kelty Zad. Make sure not to be caught in his combo. We've got so much mobility as Greyman. We can hit at the Artanis as we go out as well. Jumping in now on the Kelty Zad. He does uh, get us with his chain there, but misses the W. We're not going to chase. We don't have the chasing potential. Do a little bit of poke there as we go as well. Get them with that sidestep just in case the Artanis is aiming at us with his face prism. He's not doing so. Of course, I do get rooted, which is a misplay for me. Going to go in. Uh, we should be able to. No, not quite. Potentially could have dived under the towers. I get greedy, though, and decide I want to win. That was definitely a misplay. If I was going to die like that, I should have at least uh, got a Kelty side kill uh, for my troubles there. I get greedy, see, thinking I can kind of juke around enough to survive and continue doing range damage and getting poke and value, uh, but it ends up being a mistake. And the enemy team ends up getting both of those first nukes, which is not too good, especially considering that we've got globals and could quite easily contest. We should be at least uh, getting one of those, um, if not if not two. Uh, I think kind of the Dehaka porting down bottom would be the thing to what look for there, because obviously Falstad can't make his way top, whereas Dehaka has total global range on his global, um, so he would be able to kind of jump down. Obviously Dehaka and Falstad will wreck his old gin, no question about that. Um, so at least getting one would have been quite nice. He goes in very deep, we're going to do some damage to this guy as he goes out. Not enough to actually get the kill though. Um, and yeah, you can see just trying to poke, hit the minion waves and the heroes whenever we get a chance. We're going to pick up our quest here. And you can see I'm kind of staying back, lurking back. Don't want to get caught in any of these particular combos. Don't get rooted, but the silence zone is good. And we're just kind of poking. Pressing, uh, using our W, using inner beast whenever we're in position to kind of basic attack. Obviously, you know, we can play around. Kelty said you could definitely play around his combo. Uh, Stukov has got the slows. Again, you can juke those as well. So we're just looking to kind of avoid those sorts of things. Healthy sad. He's there and pretty deep here, actually. Okay, have some good pokes again. We are able to sidestep that. Stukov's gone way too deep. We're able to take him out. Ooh, just, he just about gets it. Lucky for him. Was looking for a bit of a greedy flask. Uh, we actually hit Zul'jin. Looking for the flask there. Get some damage in on Kelthy's out as he goes away. Take a turret shot. Don't get him, but get the Zul'jin. Uh, yeah, Stukov getting a tunnel vision on the Regar goes too deep. And of course, we're able to blow him up, which is nice. Um, and you know, we've got two damage dealers here. This means that, again, the side lane should be going should be going pretty well in our favor, though. So that is quite nice. Uh, I would say that we would be hoping to be winning a little bit more in terms of XP. I think I think we're kind of a, a bit further behind than we would like to be. We've got to make do with what we've got. Now, I don't see too many of the enemy team on the map, so obviously you want to be careful here. Not, no need to take any risks. We're a ranged hero, so we can quite safely uh, do range wave clear. That was a good uh, slow from the uh, Zildjian. Good aim on the roots. Didn't quite sidestep it and take unnecessary amounts of damage. Yeah, he's looking for the chain there. A blind chain, so he's making sure to stand to the side. So, Regar's doing mercs. Uh, Muradin and Artanis are both up top, so we're just chilling here. We don't want to take any risk. In fact, I'm noticing that uh, they're going really deep up top. Dehaka actually gets taken out, so these are some pretty big misplays. We're going to dismount Stukov as he goes through. Just slow him down, make sure he can't join into this fight too soon. Gonna come up here, throw a flask, bit of wave clear there. 
Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on, but obviously, you know, Murden plus Dehaka, two up in a, in a particular lane isn't that strong of a combo, and that's definitely not where you want to be investing your resources. Um, if, if it's going to lead to a death, that's definitely not ideal. Should have thrown the flask before I went in there, that's a mistake. We would have got the kill there if I'd uh, taken the time to throw the flask before jumping in. Uh, we hit him with the flask on the way out, but he's already got a heal. I, I think we hit him with the flask. Maybe we didn't, actually. Uh, he's already got a heal, though, so we do miss out on that opportunity. Nonetheless, though, it's a nice gank by the Muradin. It's interesting, Muradin's been playing, playing pretty well. I think just over-focus on the top lane. The hacker could take losing trades, then just burrow back in, so... Um, yeah, nice, though. That's a good tongue from the hacker. That should be a nice little kill for us. On the Diablo, indeed it is. Uh, in hindsight, I'd say this is a good time to take that boss, actually. With the nukes, we're just going to push in, it looks like. I'm going to nuke, uh, put my nuke onto the fort for maximum damage on the fort. Murden has found Nartanis. Yeah, this would have been a great time. I, I should have pinged this. This is uh, a missed opportunity to take the boss. I know it's certainly early, but, uh, I mean, Diablo's dead and Zul'jin is stuck up top lane, so it's a nice opportunity. <laughs> They're pretty synergized. You can see that these guys are kind of working on the combo. The, the Stukov, he's doing a good job in terms of timing his uh, his silence to land on top of the... Very frequently land on top of the Kelty Zad combo. So that is good to see from the enemy team. Gus comes out from Falstad to disengage. And we're just poking with the flask as we go. So we're up to 12 stacks in the flask already. Obviously we can take that vision point posturing towards it. And things are kind of stabilized again. So half a level up. We got globals though, so we should be able to make use of those. We're going to come help out Regar as we take out this camp. It's the safe thing to do. So, going to grab a nice safe camp. Have that pressure going around the map. The Merc camps are super valuable as well. The synergy with the global uh, is just uh, is quite nice. Now one thing about uh, poking with our Qs is Stukov is pretty good at healing that stuff up. Going to lead off with uh, our silver bullets there. Quick silver bullets in on the Artanis. Artanis will get taken out. We're stepping to the side here, unfortunately. Uh, we lose Regar as well. The entire enemy team is here. Hopefully Falstad is pushing like his life depended on it. We actually get drawn back in by the Stukov. We are going to be able to escape. It's not going to be uh, a big problem. Uh, he's looking for us with that guillotine, but we're able to sidestep it. A uh, bit of a risk here of Diablo. Good stun by the hacker. Interrupts Diablo as he's charging in. And possibly saves my life there, actually. Which is nice. Try to poke them with the flask, but unfortunately we hit a minion. Fasta did take out the forward up top, that's exactly what we want to see. Uh, again, throwing flask as we go back here as well. Stukov popping the push jewel for extra damage and a slow on us. I remember getting dismounted a bunch in this game by that Stukov. Gonna be able to tap a well and re-engage. Falstad is nearby. Falstad could fly behind and gust them into our uh, into our keep here and we'd win the game probably off of that. It would be amazing. We could probably double boss. Unfortunately, he's just walking in. Will he gust? He could barrel roll and gust the Zul'jin in. He's not doing it. He's holding on to it. Uh, we do get a kill on the Stukov. That's good. We could have got so much more there. Perfect. The ideal gust opportunity. We're able to poke the enemy damage dealers away. Falsa just about save the guillotine lands but it's not enough uh we're doing some poke as we go get the splash damage in on them as well hitting those uh, walls as we go Proctor w can we get this artanis kill it's a nice lockdown artanis has to port uh, dash back in because he's used blade dash sites after return thing and uh back we go doing uh, swap back to human form doing some poke damage getting some splash hitting this stuff out oh that was such Oh, it was the perfect gust opportunity. I have to say, the gusts were not very good in this game, but that was such a beautiful opportunity. Clear 4v5, gust them into your fort. Just put them in a rough spot. They're so vulnerable to being dived as well. We could absolutely wreck them. Nice engage by the Murden with the heavy impact. I like it a lot. Let me jump in, finish off the Diablo. Doing some poke as well, just sidestepping around a little bit. Just trying to vault in, getting the splash damage where we can. Zul'jin doing damage as they go out as well. I like the, the Muradin has got some nice for it. that's just short and that's a, that's a pity, it would have been nice to get some splash damage there, but no such luck, I'm gonna juke the Artanis engage, fire off our bullet, get a nice cocktail through the enemy team as well, uh, we did hit the bullet on the Kelty Sad I think, but he sealed it up fairly quickly, now we're very close to the enemy team's uh, forts, we need to be careful, also of course you know diving in, there is of course the risk that we do get blinded by the Artanis, so we want to avoid that if possible, of course, I did waste my W, so we're not going to have that available. Going to step to the side, make sure we don't root our teammates. Artanis is looking for me. We get cleansed, actually, pretty early on. Weren't specifically in danger. Pushed away by Stukov, but luckily don't actually get pushed all that far. We get the, cur uh, the cursed bullet on the Diablo. Chunk came down, and a flask on top as well for good measure. Try to mount up, get dismounted by 
the weighted pustule being popped. And uh, now, now the XP is looking good. Now we're two levels up, plus the talent here. This is nice. Enemy team is in the position to maybe take a boss. And this is, by the way, massive power spike for me as the Grey Main Executioner. We do 30% bonus damage with our basic attacks when we attack anyone that's slowed, rooted, or stunned. Redgar's got a slow. murden has got two stuns and a slow. Uh, Dehaka's got a stun. Falstad Gust is a slow. His hammer is a slow. Fantastic. Absolutely everything's going to be triggering Executioner. We're going to be doing an awful lot more damage now that we've got it. It's really nice synergy here with the sort of team comps that we have. We're looking for a pick. Can we get it? Uh, Regard jumps out a little bit too soon to hack and misses the tongue and I think a free kill and again probably double boss opportunity unfortunately thrown away. Can we still go for this boss? Uh, perhaps we can. Yeah, we're actually going to go for it here. We saw someone was up top. I'm going to sidestep the poisony pool of the boss, walk back into it, try to just juke around and take as little as damage as we can. The healing tone from Regard will keep us topped up a bit as well. Just basic attacking and uh, on cooldown and using our Q on cooldown for maximum damage. You weave the Q in between your basic attacks, a bit of extra damage. Gonna vault away, da Diablo actually pushes us. Diablo pushes it into that wall. He gets done CC'd and taken out. So that's a free kill for us. Thank you very much. Um, this might actually let us push on the keep with getting a kill right there after the boss. This is looking good. Nice jump in by Murden, dismounts them. We're looking for that stun. We're looking for that executioner damage. Unfortunately, we get blinded, so we're trying to step to the side as much as we can. We get pulled back in. We can't switch back into wolf form because we're rooted by that uh, Kel'Thuzad heroic, so we can't actually do any extra damage going in there. We get another kill on the Artanis. Unfortunately, nice work by the... Uh, oh, I missed my flask there. That's bad. Uh, nice work by the Zildjian. Unfortunately, picks off Rekar, which sort of stymies our assault here just that little bit i'm just poking in again i'm safe They're, they've got nothing that they can do to me right here the hack has gone up top to grab that nuke that's fine uh gonna run back towards middle to grab this but yeah i mean you can see they're just staying a little bit forwards uh, gets a little bit of extra damage in. There's no threat. Obviously, Kelty Sad's got no surprises that he can throw at us. Neither is Stukov, neither is Zul'jin. I mean, there's literally no threat. Diablo respawning, but we kind of had that under control. He's not actually going to get to us, so we don't have much to worry about. Just clear out this as we go as well. Map is kind of reset. Going to grab this siege camp, get that pushing in. They have to address this now because it is pushing on a pretty wounded keep. So they're going to come in and clear this pretty quickly. Not going to use the W because we've got false out here. He does uh, lots of damage as well. I think his season marksman is quite stacked up. Um, so this is pretty nice for us. I mean, if we can draw them towards the bottom... Um, this would be fantastic. I'd say looking at the map right now, what would I do? I would definitely send a hacker down bottom, push that in, force them to go defend that keep. Um, he's not doing that. <laughs> and then when they are forced to go defend the keep, we rush the top boss, get another boss. We've got Gust, so again, there's literally no danger to doing so. We've got a fort there as well, fantastic. We could make some really nice plays off of that now. The hacker is getting caught out instead. Nice cleanse from Regar, stops him from dying. Dive by Diablo. We've been uh, hit by this. We're trying to stay to the side so we can minimize some of that. Regar is done. Focusing Di uh, Diablo down. We get him down. Blind comes out though, so we have to sidestep. Uh, we're just trying to get back in human form. Throw the flask, but uh, he actually sidesteps away. I didn't expect. We're slowed down. We're trying to do what damage we can. Nice work there. Blow up the Kelty Zad. But Zul'jin comes in, does a big chunk of damage on the return. Kelty Zad has returned. He has respawned, uh, which kind of removes some of our advantage there. Uh, this is actually, ah, I remember this now. This is a mistake, so obviously I just glanced at the enemy team, hadn't spotted, you know, just in the chaos of the moment, wasn't sure he was dead. This is a mistake for me, could have been far more aggressive, uh, like Murden had the right idea there, unfortunately he does get taken out. Um, that was a mistake for me, so what happened was, like, so I remember now, obviously just glanced at the enemy team, uh, who's alive at the end of that, and went, oh, there's three of them alive, there's three of us alive, and we're, we're actually really low on life, we can't actually fight this against the Kelty Zad and Zul'jin. Didn't notice at the time that it was Zul'jin uh, respawning. So that's actually a pretty big mistake. That bottom keep is definitely very vulnerable. Uh, and it, I mean, we've got Falstad who can just walk up and nuke it. He can gust and fly away. Like So really, that is something that should be happening too. Right, using that global. He's very safe. He just wait patiently, push out the lanes. Uh, he could just, you know, he's got barrel roll. He's got gust. He's got uh, flight. There's so many tools he has to... Uh, get out uh, of a sticky situation there. You should kill that for sure. Gonna push in here. Uh, we're just clearing out these waves. We might even be able to walk up and simply nuke it. We have level 20, so we can push the enemy team back pretty nicely. We're gonna jump in, gonna kill this camp. Just get that camp going for us. Step away, Zul'jin's looking for something. He's looking for it. Don't think he can quite get it though. 
We got more nukes spawning. Both teams have two. Uh, and the bosses are still on the table. We're just going to clear out this way. Put that pressure on the enemy team. Help us clear out some stuff. Oh, yeah. They're nuking middle. Massive. Mi I think that was Falstad as well. That's a massive mistake. Uh, it's so valuable to have the nuke on the Falstad. And do we care about a middle fort? 16 minutes into the game, we got level 20? Of course not. It's, it's such a waste. You'd much rather even save the nuke for fighting on the boss or something like that. That's a huge waste of a nuke. Nuking the forts is good at the start of the game because you need experience. But at this stage of the game, it's not like, we, you, you kill, once you're level 20, you kill forts unbelievably fast. Forts are totally irrelevant at this stage. All they are are like little bits of vision. Um, this late in the game, a fort is purely vision. That's it, and, and standing experience. But the experience doesn't matter anymore. So that's what we want to be using. So this is a pretty interesting situation. We have level 20 advantage, so we could potentially force something. That Zildjian was super overextended, I would say. Murden jumps in. Could have jumped in a little bit sooner, we're going to lead off with that. That's a nice uh, guillotine there, we're obviously able to dodge this, but we are blinded unfortunately, but chasing in, going deep, Diablo is being focused down, Zul'jin is already dead. They have to, to juke around so much to avoid their goddamn skill shots, they've got so many. Diablo has gone low, he gets pulled back in, he's dead, that's a really good gust. Here we go, Stukov is down, Artanis is the last one left, do some damage to him. Gonna jump into human form, there we go, fire, shoot him with the range gun, we have a uh, flask ready to kill him as well. And that's the entire enemy team dead. This is game one. We just won the game, unfortunately we don't. So, ping the bottom keep, obviously what we do now. We've got globals, there's four nukes on the map, grab those nukes, run bottom. One nuke to kill the keep, three nukes on core, go core, the enemy team will barely be back. Easy peasy. Now unfortunately, as you can see, such is not happening. We've got two people pushing and nuking top for some reason. Uh, th this, this, really, this really sucks because um, as you guys can see, this ends up being a really long video. The, the game is won, okay? The game is won. <laughs> like we pinged it, we went in. There's nothing more we can do in that situation. I suppose we could have pinged more aggressively. Um, but uh, getting negative feedback recently for pinging too aggressively, so I don't know. I don't want to know if I want to do that in a video, you know? I might get, might get people saying mean things, so I don't know. But yeah, uh, obviously that late in the game, you've got four people alive. Even without nukes, you could probably win the game right there. Plenty of time. If you've got enough time to, uh, to, to kill two keeps, you've got more than enough time to kill a keep and a core. They're dead for that long easy that is game over game one now we should still win the game of course we've got uh we got pressure on both boss lanes which is nice um bad news enemy team is level 20 now they're all alive so that advantage uh, is gone we don't have level we don't have a talent advantage we'll never have a talent advantage now but the game should still be won because even though i think that's a massive throw not to actually push bottom um we do have globals and they do not now once again we see a big problem here We've got two globals. Where are they? They're not there. Globals are now useless. One of the best things we've got going for us is gone. Uh, and the hackette goes down. So there's the gust. Uh, uh, it looks like Murden is he gonna die as well? Maybe. Uh, he might be okay, but I think two large mistakes in that fight. I mean, number one, we have Ancestral on Falstad, who's totally safe. And then number two, we've got no gust. Uh, and Dahaka is dead. I feel real bad for Dahaka in that fight. Uh, Dahaka did, I mean, should have been using the global, sure, but he didn't really do anything wrong, you know? Poor old Dahaka. He got, he got a bad, uh, he got a bad situation there. We're going to interrupt them, poke them a little bit. Obviously, we can't take this fight. This fight's lost, right? Um, but poor old Dahaka. Two, we had two heroics available, which could have saved him, and, and neither one, neither one gets used, so that sucks. Uh, people definitely getting a bit greedy here to try secure these nukes. It's, it's a 4v5, obviously this is a losing situation. Now, he did go super deep, but we had a stun available on the Murden. He might have died, sidestepped the Artana swap. We're gonna be okay. Kel'Thuzad has gone back. This would be a decent time to fight. But unfortunately, I think we, we spent a little bit too much. Now, right now, this is a good time to go boss as well. We can rush this boss. Uh, we've got, we'll have our heroics up by the time they arrive. Kel'Thuzad is not nearby. Unfortunately, I missed my bullet, which is dumb. People are split up focusing on boss. Dahaka burrows into the wrong place. Misses an opportunity for a nice flank. Again, bear in mind, Kel'Thuzad is currently legging his way across the map to get here. He's not in this fight yet. So this is nice for us. We get blinded, we get stunned. Uh, Artanis is here, he's focusing us. Uh, unfortunately, I make a big mistake. The Zul Jin W cleaves through us. Um, the Gust, uh, too late. Uh, it was interesting, at this point in the game when I was playing it, I was like, all right, we obviously need to stop forcing these fights. 
we need to be using the globals more. Now, that is correct, for sure, uh, in terms of we should be pushing around the map and using the globals proactively in terms of map uh, play and mechanics. But there's also been, uh, now I'm watching it back, there's massive, massive team fight mistakes in terms of the correct usage of those globals and those ults. For example, watching it back right there, we actually did have a very good, it was actually a very good time it was to force the fight because Kelty side wasn't there. What was the problem? The problem was that we had a couple of heroes focus on taking the bruiser camp instead of fighting the enemy team and Ahaka burrowed in to a very defensive bush instead of going deep into the enemy. I mean, he's got adaptation, you know? Burrow deep into the enemy team, pop adaptation. You can't die with adaptation if you pop it early. Uh, lock someone down, uh, like lock down that Zildjian, grab one of the backline, grab that Stukov. Stukov is way overextended right there. And then dive in and get the kill. Um, yeah, Fossa, also, Fossa has the opportunity to, to fly over, to gust someone back. Got so many opportunities to make these big plays, uh, but uh, they're not being used properly, right? They're not being used properly. Um, so the enemy team is doing that bottom boss right now. That's gone. Luckily, we do have a fort there, so that removes some of the pressure. The boss probably, uh, oh, sorry, they're doing top boss. Okay, this one's definitely worse. So this one will be on a keep. That will almost definitely destroy our keep, and it's actually become somewhat scary. We do have two nukes to defend, and unfortunately, it looks like we will probably have to use those to defend. 22-minute boss, level 22 on the board. It's definitely pretty scary. So we want to poke this as much as possible, staying far behind. They've got pretty fast engage with the Diablo, uh, and fast follow-up and burst from a Kel'Thuzad, Sul'jin, and from Artana, so we need to be very careful in terms of our positioning. Uh, also bear in mind our level 16 does a uh, proc uh, executioner, so that's quite nice. Gonna tap the well just in case, just because I'm expecting might take some damage in the near uh, future. Missed that flask, it's not that good. I missed too many flasks as Greyman, I should be using more. You can see that the heal from our fountain is uh, now being useful, which is good. Diablo goes in deep, uh, gets pulled in, that's cool. We get targeted by the uh, Kelty Zad heroic. It actually does hit and root, that's quite interesting. It actually does root you when you're in the fountain, which I didn't expect. We're hitting this uh, Diablo, sidestep that heroic. Greymane does get taken out. We're trying to kill this Diablo. Everyone is split. I think every single person is hitting a different hero at this point. Obviously, we don't want to be diving them that deep. I, I don't think we're in a position to dive them that deep. They've got a lot of punishing damage if we do. I think killing that Diablo would be the best thing. Procking that Executioner, blow him up, get him killed, and then re-engage. Now, luckily, the core is going to survive. The shields are starting to come back up. The enemy team is on retreat, and we've got a nuke there for our troubles. So that's nice. But yeah, that's uh, you see in that team fight, they're literally everyone is hitting a, a different hero, which is is definitely not good, not good. Uh, spreading out that focus fire, very bad idea. Um, I mean, we could have one of the tanks really diving the back line and disrupting them. That's totally cool because they're both so survivable, you know. They're both so survivable, so we probably could. Uh, I don't think the enemy team did have enough there to finish it. We were actually all very quite very healthy. This is nice. Bullet jump in. Q. Boom. That's a dead Stukov. And this is huge. This is a huge opportunity. Falstad is back up in three seconds. He's got a global, remember. Nice work by the Murder. And he's focusing down Diablo. We're coming in. We're shooting him. Diablo dives in on top of us. Needed to sidestep that blind. That's a big mistake. Diablo is surviving much longer than he should because of that. Actually let Diablo survive. We get pulled back by the Artanis into that. That was a pretty slick move. And we're going to be okay. Falstad has arrived. Gusts away from the enemy team. Mistake from me. Big mistake there for me. Not sidestepping the blind. Uh, Falstad though does come in. Gets the kill. We're able to fire a cursed bullet there too. Knock that Artanis back. That could have been such a, a, a better fight for us though, I think. That could have been much, much better. I, I think we could also probably have kept forcing that at least somewhat. We had Ancestral available but it's not going to be used i think the enemy team here too has a great opportunity to take that bottom boss i don't think we can stop it um we're too far away and they have plenty of boss damage with this late game Zul'jin and artanis as well uh they're actually going and nuking bottom fort so that's good for us that means they're going to be late to that boss um so we're kind of unfortunately our teammates are going towards the bruiser camp so you know that kind of prevents any chance of going for the boss. It's probably reasonable enough because they have respawned at this point and it's a pretty big risk and we should be able to defend. They don't have that many nukes. I'm gonna take this fish and again, this is a face check, but I'm kind of fairly certain they're taking that boss, right? Uh, I mean, we could invade in here even and take their bruiser camp. That would be a pretty good call. I think doing something interesting and aggressive on the map would be good. Obviously, you can go take that bruiser camp Hearthstone out and be back in time to defend the keep. It's unexpected. We've got vision point to, to cover us as well and we'd all be there. 
Um, it, it's certainly a risky play, but I think that's kind of the play you need to make. So that's another, I feel like, missed opportunity here in this particular game. Two Bruiser Camps pushing top, forces them to go back. That was nice damage. Zul'jin goes down. It's a good Apocalypse, though. We're silenced, we're stunned. Uh, I actually forget that I went back into human form and fired my Q backwards, trying to dwarf, uh, not dwarf toss, wolf toss backwards, whatever it's called. We get uh, blinded once again, but we're able to poke him, we're doing some nice damage. That's two kills, now Diablo has soul, so he's just going to respawn. Um, this would be, again, like Falstead has flight, probably, he's got gust. We know Diablo's not here, and Zul'jin's dead. What a perfect opportunity to fly behind and gust them in. Game one! <laughs> Game winning gust opportunity right here. Look at that Stukov. He's so far out of position. Like, does it matter if you lose a keep if you kill three enemy heroes? Of course not. It's a win. It's a win, but it doesn't happen. And uh, the uh, opportunity is thrown away, flung away, really. Top boss is respawning soon. Zul'jin is uh, going to be back alive for it. Um, again, can you guys spot another missed opportunity in terms of globals? I'm sure you can. Why is Dehaka going top? When Dehaka's got a burrow? Question mark. Dehaka can push bottom and then burrow top. Dehaka can create, uh, you know, pressure down that bottom lane. Keep that pushed in. He can burrow in easily. Uh, but he's used his burrow to walk up to top lane instead of, uh, you know, they're not at the boss. Obviously, you can see them on the map. So that's unfortunate. That's another global down and waste. I know I'm being harsh on the globals, right? Uh, Murden pulls the trigger too early. Nice follow up tongue, tongue by Dehaka. I feel bad for the Dehaka in, in that. I think he did that fight really well. You know, you have to point the finger in that fight and say, look, first of all, Murden did pull the trigger too early. He could have waited a little bit, but poor old Dehaka, he got a great follow-up tongue. He was in the right position there going into it. He did a really nice job. He got, everything got blown on the Dehaka. He couldn't pop any of his abilities to survive, right? Uh, Regar gets rooted and it's gonna be game over. But I mean, poor Dehaka in that fight. There was Gust available. There was, I'm pretty sure, Cleanse and Ancestral, both available. Everything was available. We had two Heroics, perfectly suited to save that to Hacka. Both of them available to use there, and neither one used. I feel bad the poor guy got just one shot. Like, everything was on him, uh, which means that nothing was on our teammates there. Perfect opportunity to save that to Hacka. Uh, but he, he gets, like, one shot, basically, through no fault of his own. Falsa gets taken out by Zul'jin. And uh, it was going to be game over anyway. We weren't we weren't close to being able to defend this. The enemy team winning with that. And yeah, there you go. GG. Game over. I think really unfortunate. You know, 29-minute game. It was a it was a close game. Um, you know, all I have to say is, look, we ping we ping the winning condition. We were in position. We get MVP. 47% hero damage. You know. <laughs> you try, but you can't win them all, can you? But yeah, we had the game won. Like, it was legitimately won. We pinged it, we went bot. People didn't follow. Uh, you know, you need to... Like, that's such an easy win. You've got so many nukes. The enemy team is dead for so long. At that point, you've got four heroes alive. Easy win. I'm going to give it a three stars uh, for uh, coordination. The false side damage is very low, has to be said. Um, but yeah, I think the big thing for me watching this game was going... I thought the Muradin played a really nice game, really, really nice game. The Regar uh, did have a good game overall. Um, and, you know, a fast and Hacker played pretty well overall too. But crucially, the crucial things that were missing in that particular game was we had two globals, but we didn't play around them at all. Like, there was no point where we had the Hacker, like, split off, pushing down a lane, going, yo, guys, yo, enemy team, you guys have to go and defend this lane. Um... And then I'm going to burrow in. We're going to force a team fight and win a four v five, a five v four on our on our half. If you try to force the fight, uh, I'm going to burrow in. It'd be a five v five, um, and we're stuck here, you know. So that would have been nice. But anyway, there you go, guys. The gusts as well, missed opportunities. But hope you enjoyed nonetheless. I'll see you all next time for more Curious of the Storm. Bye bye.